Greetings, huntsmen and huntresses. Dudes, dudes, then back again with Ruby. Last time we got to know about the village that John had been staying. The village of the Papers Pleasers. Helpful little paper people who are apparently very accident prone at first viewing. Town set on fire, them almost being submerged, and they are, well, living paper. It's so extreme to the point where John has a daily schedule of how to protect them. But one of the Papers Pleasers explained to Team Ruby that they don't wish to die, they wish to ascend, like the cat explained previously. It is their natural way of life. If they ascend, they can become something more sturdier and more capable. And so the team tries to convince John about this, but he's hearing none of it. He does not trust the ascension process. It really brings into question, is John wrong about all this? But this is all sidelined as the Jabberwalker clones become come into the village attacking everyone and everything. Everyone does their best to fight against the Jabberwalkers. Everyone except Ruby, who ends up having a bit of a panic attack, unable to fight against the creatures. And while the group manages to hold them off and destroy most of them, they then find out that Neopolitan is the one behind all of this, with them realizing that somehow her powers have grown. But because of this attack, John missed his schedule, and the papers please ascend in the flood, which destroys John, feeling the, as though he has failed to save someone yet again. And while the others try to comfort John, Ruby loses it, feeling as though she had been neglected because of everything that has happened, with me personally just believing that her friend saw what was going on with her, and just simply chose to wait until she came to them. But John, also in a similarly tumultuous emotional state, blows up right back at Ruby, saying that everything that has happened to them is her fault. And with no one else choosing to engage with Ruby, in her hurtful words, she simply runs away. Not the best choice when a more dangerous than ever Neapolitan is on the prowl. But the question now becomes, what happens to Ruby when she is essentially all alone? I'm pretty sure she has little with her still, but, well, they do say that Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Let's see if that's true, shall we? Oh god, another one of these warnings? Ugh, come on. We've never had those back to back. Ugh, that means someone's gonna try to unalive themselves again. Oh, running? Yeah, running. Oh, Ruby. Said some really hurtful things there, friend. So what now? Uh, she's lashing out at the mouse, too. Yeah, she's blaming herself for Atlas, too, of course. <sighs> well, that's not gonna end well. And it's hard to tell if things are getting dark metaphorically. Metaphorically? Or if this is actually happening? Huh. Uh-oh. What is she crossing over to? Oh, what the heck? A house? What? It's Neapolitan. Oh, it's in Paris. Did Roman help her kill her parents? Oh, that's not the original voice. Uh-oh. Who is everyone? Oh, Penny and Pira. Wow. It is weird seeing her in this style. And Leonardo was a faunus? Did we know that? I, I, I barely ever remember Leonardo. Oh, jeez. Clover, Ospin, Ironwood. Everyone who's died. <laughs> this is kind of wild. I know Neo's backstory was explained in a book, but, huh. I never read it. Oh, Little came. So this is happening. Oh, the leaves? What about the leaves? Why from exist? Oh, weird. <laughs> they thought that if she was having a problem, she would come to them, you know? <sighs> that is sometimes the mistake we make as friends. It's like we think that, hey, if there's anything wrong, the people we care about will come to us. Like, we know we can go to them. But Ruby was trying to be strong. She was trying to be the leader. And she kind of needed someone to push the emotions out of her. That's not really fair, but hey, sometimes we make the worst decisions when we're hurt. I bet John regrets what he said. Oh, jeez. This level of power is insane. Like, she has... Uh, this is so surreal. Uh, uh, oof. Oof. Oh, Oscar. Jeez. Wow, wow. She really does want the cruelest option. Oh, whoa, what was that? The cat? It is the cat. Huh, wait, what? He can be her. What? Oh, wait, what? So he was... Oh, snap. What the hell? Oh, why his makers left him? The brothers? Did the brothers make this place? Oh, snap. Oh, jeez. 
Oh, Jesus! No, 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 uh, wait, 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 what's going on? Wait, so Neo got what she wanted. Oh, so she thought ascending was death too. Probably because of what she's heard from John and, well, just John mostly. But now that she's done it, she doesn't know what comes next for her, does she? Taking out Ruby was the plan. Uh, uh. Whoa, gee, whoa, wait. What? Oh God! Oh God! Jesus! So, what happens to Neo now? Oh, gee. Oh boy. Huh. I guess I was a fool for actually thinking we were going to explore Neo's backstory to some degree. I mean, I know the essential gist of it, but I don't know. There's always the chance that some details change for the actual series series. You know, it just... You think she would relate a little bit more to Weiss in general? Oh, the village again? Well, thank you for reminding me of the papers, please. Yeah, the cat, jeez. You know, it went from, is the cat evil? To, oh, the cat is very evil. <laughs> jeez, and that toothy grin. Man, that, oof. So, the artwork were just important things in her life. Her backstory with her parents, her alliance with Cinder, and then Roman Torch with themselves. I'm actually curious how she felt about Cinder, all things considered. Did she really think that Cinder was on her side? Was she playing Cinder? I don't know. The whole situation makes me just more curious about Neo, because, like, she just gives up. It really goes to show it's just, like, she made Ruby her mission for so long. It's like, okay. Congratulations, you essentially killed her in the worst way possible. Now what? I think that it was her realizing in that last moment, yeah, now what? There, There is nothing. It didn't bring back Roman, and she lashed out at a already vulnerable Ruby, not to mention Little. Like, gee, it's sad too, because Ruby said that Little being around her would ultimately get the creature killed, but it wasn't so much that being around her got Ruby killed, got little killed it was the fact that ruby was just so lost in her own sorrow and sadness she pretty much didn't try but it just became another thing for ruby to blame herself for and i i get the content warning now because it's essentially ruby unaliving herself but i think it's also the want to kind of maybe be reborn as something better and i think that's what she's aiming for she thinks that maybe you know, either she'll be gone and nobody will get hurt because of her or she'll become the her she thinks she's supposed to be you know if john is right then she disappears if the cat is right she becomes something better. Like, there's a lot of ways to look at that. It's still really messed up, though, when you think about it. And John was 100% right for not trusting that damn cat. I mean, we kept it ambiguous at first, but it was just like, nope, nope, cat's evil. Kill the cat, kill the cat, kill the cat. <sighs> Man, it was a combination of good and sad to see a lot of these characters again, too. Clover, and Pyrrha, and Penny, and Roman. Like, a lot of them died before we actually got to experience the new engine, and a lot of them look good. But, ah, the nature of how they returned. And I was wondering about the power that Neo had. I did wonder how deep that was going to go, but it was mostly just a vessel to make the cat more dangerous. And now that the cat has possessed Neo, like, what happens now? Eh. And I have a feeling that while John was right about the cat, I mean, phew, cat's dubious in general. I can't believe he was right about the tree. Of course, because Ruby's the main character, that can't equate to death, but... But what happens to her now? Maybe she goes on a journey of herself? But if ultimately the tree does not equate to essentially death for a human, then what happened to Alex's brother? Maybe he became someone else and then later returned. I'm so curious about this world. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. To be honest, I hope this isn't the end for Neapolitan, though, because I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I've been waiting for something kind of big to happen to her character, especially once Cinder kind of directed a lot of uh, hatred and animosity towards Ruby. But I don't know. If this is where her journey leads, then eh, I'm kind of disappointed by it. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe for more Ruby. And until then, I've been Dudes This Then, and I hope to see you later. Take care. Bye bye.